Praise God, praise God. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries, and I want to thank you for coming back and giving me another opportunity to share the heart of God with you. So I'm going to jump right in here. Now, a few weeks ago, we celebrated Juneteenth, which was the Declaration of Freedom of African Americans from Slavery. Today, we celebrate Independence Day, commemorating the passage of the Declaration of Independence by the Second Continental Congress in 1776. This was done by their vote on July 2nd in favor of independence from Great Britain. The process was finalized two days later with the completed revision of that document. The celebration was initially modeled after that of the king's birthday. Bell ringing, uh, bonfires, Solomon processions, and speeches. Now the first observance actually took the form of a mock funeral for the king symbolizing the end of monarchy and tyranny over the people of this nation, this new nation, and the rebirth of liberty. Now, there are those acknowledgments of liberty. Now let's talk about true liberty, the liberty provided and offered by God through his son, Jesus Christ. This liberty is available to all, regardless of race, age, nationality, size, let's see, what else could be, um, gender, political affiliation, or status, educational, financial, or social. Let's look at John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. And I know many of you all, if not everybody, if you've been to a, a sporting event, you've seen John three sixteen. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he, that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him shall not perish, come to destruction, or be lost, but have eternal everlasting life. For God did not send the Son into the world uh, in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. He who believes in him, who clings to, trusts in, relies on him, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him, there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But he who does not believe, cleave to, rely on, trust in him, is judged already. He has already been convicted and has already received his sentence. Because he has not believed in, trusted in the name of the only begotten son, he is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. And then let's also look at John chapter 8, verse 36. So if the Son liberates you, makes you free, makes you free men, then you are really and unquestionably free. Now the men spoken of here is not gender, but as in mankind. This liberty is a sure thing unto all who believe. Now, from there, now God done all he's going to do. It's already said, it's already done, it's already accomplished, it's already available, and it is offered. We accept it, but it doesn't stop there. From there, we are responsible for holding to that freedom. Our liberty through the greatest love sacrifice of Jesus Christ, shedding his blood, giving his life, however risen from the dead, and is now alive and seated at God's right hand, having defeated the devil and death on our behalf. For our freedom from Satan's jurisdiction, control, machinations, we can say no. We can say no to the devil's shenanigans, and we can say no to the stirring of our flesh. And be sure, yeah, it can be a, a tall order and easier said than done. And let me see, <laughs> any other cliche you could think of, meaning that, yeah, you can say that, but, you know, you weren't there with me when I was trying not to. You weren't there with me. You weren't up with me all night when I was trying to uh, withhold from or whatever it is that may be that it for you. But you see, we're not asked to do, God does not ask us to do anything that he has not either equipped us to do it 
or will be, well, he will always be with us through it all, but he will be right there. He's there for the asking, Lord God, help me. Help me say no, help me turn away, help me hold to this. But we still have a responsibility, a responsibility to the liberty he has given us to, to make that first declaration, no, I'm not going there, I'm not doing it, I am free, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, help me hold fast to this. Now, let's look at uh, Galatians 5, 1, chapter 5, verse 1. And I'm going to read it first in the King James Version. And I, that's the one that we are most familiar with. Um, I remember uh, in one church where I was a member, and the choir sang this, and this verse was in a song, in one of the songs that they sang. And the men would, uh, okay, I'm going to read it first, and then I'll tell you the rest of this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay, so here we go. So the choir is standing there, and they're doing their thing. And they get to this one part where it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. So the men, the bass and the, the baritones, they would sing that part. And it was so powerful. And the drums, you know, like, stand fast in the liberty. You know, and the beat was there. And it just gave so much emphasis and power to me. That's how I saw it, how I received it. Christ has given us liberty. And it's up to us to say, I refuse to go back. I refuse to turn, to go back into that, whatever that may be. I refuse to give in again. I refuse to succumb to my flesh. I refuse to bow down to what the enemy presents or any of his temptations. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't put that thing back on you. Don't carry it. It's done. It's gone. Rebuke it when it comes and not, not just say, no, don't do that. Get away. I'm not going to do that. No, put some authority in your voice. Christ has made you free. Now I'm going to read that same version. I mean, that same verse, Galatians chapter five, verse one in the Amplified Classic version. In this freedom, Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. Stand fast then. And do not be hampered and held ensnared and submit again to a yoke of slavery, which you have once put off. Yes, we celebrate Juneteenth, which is June 19th. Yes, we celebrate Independence Day, 4th of July. But remember to celebrate our freedom by salvation. Through Jesus our Lord, what he has provided, he has made us free. Remember that and celebrate that every day, 365 days of the year. And every year that you, so it's 365, oh, let me do it, okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, 24-7, 365, and every single year of your life, you born again Christian. There you go. Celebrate your freedom and liberty through Christ Jesus and declare to the enemy, I am set free by Jesus Christ. You have no jurisdiction, no say in my life. And when I have a weak moment, Jesus, mm, I call on your name. When I have a weak moment, Holy Spirit, help me hold fast. And through it all, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, Father. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. That's true liberty. So the title of this, I kind of jumped ahead. <laughs> Independence Day. Celebrate liberty. Praise God. Praise God. So like, share. Uh, almost said celebrate. But yeah, you can do that too. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Encourage your friends and family to, to subscribe. When you share it, put a little note to, to, um, to invite them to, to subscribe if these messages are touching their heart. My thing is not all about the numbers. The numbers look good and that's exciting. But my heart is that you get it. To, that you get, you understand the intimacy available to you that God has available and desires for you to have. And then I introduce you to that. 
but that you continue and you develop that and get closer and closer to God and hold fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Praise God. That's all I have for you today. Glory to God. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Christ has made us free. Amen. Bye-bye.